Okay, I will be very short, don't be afraid. Uh, fast and short. Okay. Um, does it work? Nope. Okay. Okay, sorry. Technology never working perfectly. Okay, um, citizen science and open data management. Uh, um, this is a, a quite complex uh, argument. I, will, I, want, I want to start what before uh, investigating which is the actual rule for citizen science, which rule can they have. Uh, actually, it's quite difficult to ask a cow to behave like a, like a whale or a, a dolphin, clearly, or a dolphin behave like a whale. We cannot ask citizens to fulfill all the tasks of a scientist because citizens have different degrees of skills and ants can perform different kinds of tasks. Uh, this uh, is known as the uh, Pyramid of Citizen Science. It was published by Mac Mukliai uh, in 2013. Is an, uh, a researcher which is dealing in English research dealing with citizen science since many years ago. And uh, you can see that citizen science can have four theoretical levels of engagement by citizens. Uh, the first one uh, is the crowdsourcing. Is uh, citizens became a sensor for scientists. They collect data. Simply collect data. But uh, depending on the experience and the skills, citizens can climb far higher in this uh, level, in this pyramid of citizen science, up to the fourth level, which is extreme, in which citizens not only define uh, the task, the, the, the subject of investigation, they define also the methodology, they collect data, and they elaborate the data. Uh, and these scales are not so rare. We have some, or even in Italy, even in thanks, uh, during my project in small life, we uh, fostered one experience like this in the town of Bre uh, Brescia. Citizens are monitoring, decided to monitor some areas, and they are collecting data, elaborating them, presenting them to the municipality, which changes the degree of protection of a given area of their uh, they investigated area. So it, there, we have examples of this. Anyway, we are talking about data, so level one is more than enough now. Uh, I want to show you how it works. Um, volunteers are perfect for early warning systems, especially because they are many. We are few, researchers are few. We are actually in a, a red list. Uh, this is an example of uh, citizen science. Uh, the two photos on the your left okay, uh, were taken by the, a, an Australian uh, tourist which went for uh, a field trip in New Zealand. He took two shots and he didn't know what things they were, so they he put it in this uh, social networks, Instagram, something like that, and uh, asked to somebody what they are. Well, the first one is the second known individual of that species ever seen. Uh, it was only uh, represented by a drawing in a museum. So, uh, well, that's important. The second one is the only living photo of an individual of that genus in the world before there was a collected a dead specimen in a museum. Okay, uh, in Italian language, in an Italian language, in scientific Italian language, this is defined culo del principiante. Uh, okay, <laughs> it was very lucky. I would give a, I would give a lap to find such a, such a wonderful. Uh, Specimens. Anyway, uh, citizen science works because citizens are more, far more than researchers. We have two eyes, they have thousands of eyes. This is why it works perfectly. However, the, it raises uh, some issues. Data quality is the first one. Since we are talking about open data, we also, we have, we also have to discuss the quality of data. As I already ended yesterday uh, in my first presentation, uh, data quality is a big issue because special researchers tend to put barricades against citizen science data. Sometimes they are using them without knowing it, but uh, uh, actually they have issues. We all have issues because when we are producing, for example, models for understanding the distribution and the feature distribution of a species, clearly we need reliable data. We cannot use any data. We need reliable data. Citizen science data can be reliable well, uh, this is a, a paper from a, a, an ornithologist in the USA who says, well, uh, the colleagues, the colleagues say that 
these are not good data. Anyway, ornithologists are working with volunteers since hundreds of years ago. Uh, the example I put, uh, I, I told yesterday, of the uh, Audubon Society in the USA, they started this Christmas bird uh, count in, uh, 90, in the first day of this, uh, the last century. And they are continuing, uh, it's 118 years, they are continuing this count. And they built an in incredible historical series of data which are fundamental for the knowledge of birds and their, uh, uh, their population in the USA. And this is not the only experience. There are other experiences with built incredible historical series thanks to the involvement of volunteers, especially in ornithology, but not only in ornithology. Uh, probably ornithology is the most relevant uh, area of knowledge in which volunteers are involved nowadays, but uh, even mycology and other things. This is another interesting, uh, interesting thing about uh, data quality. This is the art portal, and I cited it yesterday as well. You know, they collect a huge amount of data. This is an old uh, slide, but uh, that they, uh, I, think I took this screenshot at uh, Lunch time. It was uh, it, uh, they had collected in that day more than 800 uh, observations. Big problem here is uh, the datum. Uh, the quality of datum is the re uh, the only responsible for the quality of datum is the observer. This is a problem. This is a problem because we cannot have. Uh, they don't have a solid and clear pipeline of data quality control. So we can we rely on this data? Another example is iNaturalist. iNaturalist is a platform which is nowadays, uh, you, you see, uh, collecting more than 8 billion records. It's an incredible amount of records. They are collecting new day records every day. Uh, this number is increasing fast, fast and fast. Uh, again, here we have a pipeline for data quality control, but but uh, this is based on a consensus approach, which means that if at least, uh, I don't know the number is, I think five observers validate positively a record, this is given for uh, good. However, uh, even uh, this democratic approach cannot be enough because especially when we are dealing with difficult species, difficult to identify, for example, uh, clearly, clearly, uh, the opinion of an expert is far more relevant than the positive opinion of hundreds of persons which are not experts of that group of volunteers. So uh, again, they have a pipeline for data quality control, but this pipeline could not be accepted by many researchers. Anyway, they at least expose it. So they say, we, this is how we do it, and that's right. Uh, however, and you, even if there are issues about data quality control. There are a lot of papers, this is only one of the many you can find on the web, uh, that say that citizen science data can be used, can be used in, uh, uh, in any kind of scientific research, if you treat them the right way. Um, but let's go back to the topic, open data. Open data are defined as those data which can be used by anybody uh, freely, uh, they can be reused, redistributed, and uh, are subjected only, at most, to the requirement of uh, citing the phone, the observer of the phone, and to share like. Uh, in the world of biodiversity, this is currently the most relevant resource for uh, open data. This is the GBIF, Global Biodiversity Information Facility. This resource is currently aggregating even all the data uh, that are coming from uh, the two examples I put before, the R portal, uh, uh, we are talking about, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, 30, billions, 30 millions of records nowadays, uh, and from the uh, iNaturalist, which is close to uh, 10 million records. So this means that all the citizen science data are, uh, most of the citizen science data which are collected in the world are flowing into this resource. Because citizen science data clearly are uh, naturally open data. 
a citizen put this data, uh, collect data to give them to the community. He's not collecting data for himself, especially if it does not the skills for analyzing or using them for scientific papers, scientific purposes. However, even in citizen science, in the citizen science world, there are experiences in which data are not collected in as open data. Um, this uh, platform, uh, which is to me uh, the most relevant uh, resource, uh, at least in Italy, for uh, ornithologists, uh, has a, 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 a tricky uh, way for assessing the data. Only the person which subscribe it can assess the data. They don't share the data with other platforms, which is quite, uh, I don't know, to me it's funny. You know, because it's citizen science, you should. But uh, ornithologists are a very close community. Uh, here, the rules are quite difficult to understand because uh, they uh, give access to the data only to the projects that their committee accept as a good project for using the data. And you, as a user, cannot even assess data from other users if you are not a good contributor of the platform, which is quite... Uh, Difficult to understand, in my opinion. But anyway, this is a, a very an incredible platform which hosts an incredible amount of high quality data, which is a pity that are not open access to everybody, and especially they are not feeling the National Biodiversity Network, which is the main decision system from our country, which is uh, a problem. Another problem which arises with uh, with citizen science data then is they misuse. Uh, when, you, when we put data open, then everybody can use it. Uh, but citizen science data, as any scientific data, can be act, can be used for uh, the wrong purpose. Uh, for example, poachers, especially in Africa, are using scientific data and citizen science data to find their prey. And this is an item. Even if we protect data, uh, we have the, the Inspire Directive and many other directives which force us to hear some part of the data, at least the most sensitive, which are related to rare species and dungeon species, uh, even those data can be hacked, can be assessed some way, not that difficult. We are not uh, uh, banks, uh, we are not uh, big companies, our databases are not that protected. We think maybe we have protected database. We don't have very, very, very good, very well protected database. So this data can be assessed. And since they can be assessed, can be misused. Even uh, more, the open data we are putting every day in the web, in our uh, platforms, in our project. So uh, big problems about open data are first thing we need to convince everybody to put the data as open data. This is the main task. Since the Rio conference, it's relevant that every data should be assessed by everybody. That's the first thing. And then we need to protect the data. We need to protect especially the sensitive data to put out the most information we can, but protect with very high carefulness all the data which can be sensitive to uh, uh, and subject to hacking for uh, any purpose which is not scientific or conservation. Okay? And uh, with this I finish. It's, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, in terms of validation, uh, my opinion is that for many scientific purposes, such as species distribution modeling, we know that the, the vast number of data accounts for some identification problems or wrong data. Uh, but I was wondering, in terms of validation, there is expert validation, there is automated validation systems, there is peer validation, such as on iNaturalist. 
in your opinion, what would be an ideal validation system for citizen science data if we were to implement a standard for that uh, worldwide? What do you think? In my opinion, it's not. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't exist a perfect validation system. First of all, you need uh, some something for validating and verifying a data. I mean, if you collect a data on observation without an image or a sound or something, that data can never be verified properly because you don't have anything to verify. It. Anyway, uh, in my opinion, it's not that important to have uh, that all the data can be verified. It's important that a common pipeline for identifying the data, for verifying the data should be shared and should be created, and that uh, that pipeline at the level of certainty of the data should be made clear for each single datum as a metadata in the world. I mean, when I take data from the GB, for example, I, have, I take data for lichens. Normally, we don't have citizen science data, but we have many observations. Uh, I, how can I consider reliable a datum or another? I need something. So I would like to have a, a sort of label which tell me, okay, it was verified by peers, it was verified by an expert, it was a, a degree of certainty. Because I can put my, in my models data which are not which are only fifty percent certain, but I need to know whether they are fifteen percent certain at least. Okay? So maybe a common pipeline developed at least a European level as a regulation uh, to uh, and information sent together with the datum as metadata could be enough to improve the use of citizen science data by researchers. Okay, last question. Okay, it's our side. Thank you, Stefano. <laughs> we can uh,